I hope you're all doing great. This is Jose Trujillo, and I'm about to do a a little uh, painting demo here for you nice people. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. So let's see what it looks like. Clean my palette first for a little bit here. I've got a lot of cleaning to do with my palette. I'm scrape the palette. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Get it nice and clean. And now. Oh, you know what? I think I need a little bit of purple. Let me mix a little bit of purple before I get started. So this is the purple that I use. I use the dioxin purple. How you doing, Fiorenza? Good to see you. Let me put some... Um, a little bit of purple on my palette here before we get started. Hope everyone's doing good today. So I mix some I mix some purple. I got some purple mix. Let's do this. Clean up a little bit more. That's a lot of cleaning up. I feel like most of my time trading art was just a little bit cleaning up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get a canvas and let's get rolling. So I'm gonna paint some some uh, apples here, an apple tree, apple branch, and let's see what it looks like. It's gonna be a vertical canvas. There we go. All right, let's get started. So the very first thing that I do is I love to make a quick sketch, a quick drawing of my subject. And I'm gonna use lamp black to do that. Sort of like, just like a little drawing. I'm gonna pretend that I'm drawing it with my, my brush here. Here's another apple. Now I don't stay too long with him in this process, uh, but I but I try not to not to rush the process either because it's important to get somewhat um, some somewhat representational. My style is very loose, so a lot of representation is not important since. The style has uh, more to do with expressionism using impressionistic brush strokes. So uh, it doesn't have to be realistic, in other words. But, but it is important to put somewhat of the representational aspect in there. Because we need some of that as we're making the painting. That's going to be needed. Not a lot, but we need some of it. Here's a little branch. There we 
Go. I'm gonna have another apple back here. Maybe even maybe even something else over here. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the brush and I'm going to use a wider brush. And I'm going to start coloring those apples. Because I start with the subject matter before I move on to the to the background or, or, or things around it. I'd like to start out with subject matter first. In this case, the apples. So I'm not even going to work on the leaves or anything like that. I want to start out plain and simple. This is a very minimalist approach. Um, it, it gets a little confusing sometimes. Now that I'm teaching this, some people, some people uh, have expressed to me that it has gotten a little bit confusing um, because they think it's because it's minimalism. They think it's fewer brushstrokes, and it doesn't necessarily mean fewer brushstrokes. The, the approach is simple. But, but there's plenty of brush strokes in there, and you'll see when we progress in the painting. Um, this is not a one of those uh, styles of paintings where a couple of brush strokes is going to make happen. It's going to make the whole thing happen. We need plenty of brush work. It seems that way because it's so simple, right? It's, it's draw it, design it, draw it, and paint it. Some of them are gonna have, some of them are not, are not fully ready yet. They're gonna have some, some green, some yellow green in there. Not fully ripe. Or maybe they are, and that's just their color. back to that red, that almost candy red. And again, calmly, very simple. Uh, my child, my, my, my child, my style has changed uh, over the years. Uh, not too too much but but maybe that's what i'm thinking maybe it has changed a lot uh some years back my style was a lot more quicker now it's it's a it's a bit more it's a bit slower there's a there's an energy a change of energy that i've done with it and to allow me to do other things that i couldn't do with a quicker style with a with a looser brush I used to use a looser brush style. Now it's a little bit more tight, but but it's still loose. It's still loose enough. I'm, I'm trying to um, just let it unfold and and see what where it wants to go. Sometimes sometimes uh, that's all it really needs. Your painting just needs for you to let it unfold and not not be so rigid with it. So that's what I'm learning. 
doesn't have to be too loose. It doesn't have to be too tight. It can just be right, just right. And, and, and that idea of right changes. You know, it's not the same all the time. It changes for me. But never too drastic. It just kind of tilts back and forth. One of the things I don't like is staying in the same the same style, the same the same theme, the same thing. It, it just it, I can't do that. I know some artists have a, a, a they they love doing that, you know, uh, painting I don't know gardens all the time, or or painting portraits all the time, or still lives or whatever. I I I feel a need to go explore a different subject. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. And so, before we jump into any any type of uh, highlights or details, I uh, I recommend artists to stay in the structure of the form, the structure of the the object that you're painting, before jumping into any sort of detail, any sort of highlight. And, and, and the structure usually has to do with with um, it's got to do with the form itself it's got to do with getting that that object to not just be three-dimensional but also for it to have life for it to have movement it's not just about being three-dimensional you want it to have some sort of movement uh, yes values and, and shadows and all of those things are important but I think what's most important is that there is a sense of, of life in it without it being so representational without trying to mimic a photograph and so I stay a little longer in this in this stage this is I guess how my my style has changed over the years where I stayed longer in this stage this stage was was faster um, years back I used to paint it a lot faster but now now I take my time on this stage I, I recognize the importance of, of for my style right I recognize the importance of this stage it's almost like sculpting I feel like a I feel like a, one of those Italian sculptors with a painting one of those famous Italian sculptures uh, but but playing with oil See, no, no highlights yet. None of what I'm doing, nothing of what I'm doing is really a highlight. It's all part of the structure of the painting. And it, and it starts giving it a, a, a sense of aliveness, a depth to it, if you will that I could not get otherwise. Uh, I mean, I could achieve it with, with again, with representational realism, um, but not the way I wanted. The way I wanted, I, I, I needed to feel like heavy, right? I needed to hit, feel heavy, like if it was a sculpture. And now I can do some of those details, some of those highlights on those apples, and you'll see what I mean by that. It's basically tinting down some of the color with white, and, and with other colors, it doesn't just have to be white. You can do some of that. Just 
just carving away. I look at the painting more like carving now. More like a sculptor. Playing with clay. But but it's paint, right? <laughs> it's not of course it's not clay. But having that approach. then getting some white as a highlight and putting some of that color right there These are almost little kisses of white. Nothing too overt. There we go. Let's see if you can see that from the front. What I mean by it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on those on those leaves. And in a similar fashion, just blocking. No need to worry about anything other than blocking color. Just imagining the leaf taking its course. Whether there's wind or not, how would it fall? Let it unfold like it's a like if it's dancing, the leaf the leaf is dancing. Wind or no wind. It's it's a It's perfection because a leaf doesn't think, right? Should I fall this way? Should I fall that way? It's uh, it's intelligence. It's it's pure. Sometimes uh, I see artists painting leaves like if they're painting a portrait of a person. Uh, usually, it's very difficult to catch a good representation or a good portrait. Uh, because human beings were very self-conscious and so you almost have to catch the person when they're not when they're not conscious when they're not looking or they don't feel like they being like they're being watched and and then you catch a good uh, you can catch a good a good portrait either by photography or a good sketch if the person's not doesn't feel like they're being watched uh, because they're they're in their most natural moment when, when a person knows that they're being watched, um, almost 100% of the time they're acting. They're raising their eyebrow, or they're, they're, it's, it's a force. It's a forceful thing. Usually doing something that is not natural, because they're, they're, so con they're, they're conscious that they're being watched. And so they want to put their best face out there and in consequence, as a consequence of that, it's very difficult to catch a good portrait. Look at that. Uh, let's see, I have a question here from Anna. It says, uh, do you recommend the painting uh, water lilies workshops for beginners who never painted before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's a very... It's a very simple, easy to follow um, method. I break it down in, uh, in a very simple formula. I might start doing some, some either, even simpler um, uh, video workshops uh, for the very beginner um, rather than, than, than uh, 
someone who's already been creating artwork or intermediate or anything like that. Uh, but the, 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 the way that I break it down is, is so simple. The steps that I do, they're so simple that, that I, I, I think that anyone can get started with it. And you don't, you don't, it doesn't have to look like what I painted, right? What I painted uh, is a result of 20 plus years of painting. But, uh, but just, if it just gets you going and getting, getting uh, that, that feeling of both looseness, right? Because it's, it's, it's a very loose way of painting, but also start, you start catching those things that I, that I talk about in the painting or what I'm saying here as well. Uh, you start catching those things like, hey, I don't have to worry about the leaf. It could just be a little color. I'm not really thinking about what the leaf looks like. If I just mix the colors the way he did, and I just do something similar, uh, it might not look the same way as he as he is painting it, but I'm gonna get the same feeling. And that's really, I mean, that's the most important part, that you get the feeling of it. The feeling is more important than the result. The result is, 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 is uh, the, the result is a matter of time. The feeling is the most important part. The, the, the little bliss, maybe not little, but the bliss that comes out of painting, whether you're doing it quote unquote right or wrong, uh, as long as as long as you feel that that easiness in yourself, you're doing it right in my book. I've seen I've seen uh, many many artists who have uh, studied art and have a, have a really hard time becoming loose because they were never they were never introduced they were never taught or introduced uh, to let go and I think ninety percent of creating art is letting go it's not about it's not about making it nice or right it's 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 about letting it go. It's almost like you, you you have to learn how to be a child all over again as you as you learn how to paint. Have that uh, that feeling that you had when you were a child when you were doing something. It didn't matter what it looked like. The child the child in 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 their in their joy, the child is imagining that they are Michelangelo, that they are Raphael, they're Monet. They don't have a, a, a negative idea of their artwork because, because they have the right, the right ingredients, which is joy. The right ingredients is all that matters. Which is joy. Look at that. Everything else is secondary. How's it going, Jay? Good to see you here, my friend. Oh, thank you so much, Anna. Ricardo says, uh, I can almost eat that fruit, my friend. Looks yummy. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, the, the primary thing is that is that you feel the joy when you're painting. I know it sounds super corny, but... If you're not feeling the joy, everything else is kind of like it doesn't matter. And sometimes the joy doesn't come out right away. Sometimes it takes a, a few tries, you know. Um, sometimes it takes a couple of days or a few days. And then you start getting the hang of it. But not the hang, the hang of, you don't get the hang of painting it right. That's... That's something I recommend artists not to chase, because you never catch it. As Salvador Dali said, it's a form of perfectionism, and, and, and you never get it. Or when you feel like you got it, 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 loose, it, it escapes all over again. You can never really catch it. But I found that you can catch joy. There's no catching to it. And joy, I, I, I go with joy than anything else. 
that, that bliss that you feel when you're creating something and you don't care it's it's, it's like when you're singing and and, and and you're not a professional singer but you're singing in the in the in, in, in the shower or in your car and you don't have to hit the notes right and and you don't have not, not know that is important and, and you can if you're you know you start taking it a bit more serious and you, you keep practicing and all of that that's great but even if you do if you lose the joy i i i'd rather go back to the joy than to the than to the professional seriousness of it because after all the reason why i'm doing it even if i'm a professional at this is because i enjoy it if i didn't enjoy it anymore I, I'd be I'd be doing a different profession. And so I always go back to that. I, I, I say that over and over. Try, try to find the peace, the joy, whatever whatever that, that feeling is. And so it's a very deep state. And yet it's not it's not imposing. It's just there. It just kinda sits there. And you you feel like this you feel butterflies when you're Every, every brush stroke that you're doing, whether you know, again, quote unquote, what you're doing or not, you know, you have a feeling that you're doing the right thing. It's right action. Look at that. Let me, let me give you a front view of that. There we go. And there they are. These are the little apples. It's supposed to say world's greatest living art is there, but I could only fit my name. <laughs> Jay says, I find uh, my greatest joy after I put in a lot of production because my art evolved 10x best. Oh, I love that. World's greatest living artist <laughs> advice ever. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, you just do the work and everything else falls in place so there it is my friends look if you give it more space it, it uh perfect for fall oh yeah absolutely if you give it more space then you can really it it, it comes together even more because the the brushwork is so loose that it needs space and it's breathing space monet used to talk about that a painting needs space it needs space not only space to for the viewer, you need to step back and look at it, but also when you're creating it, you need to leave space. There needs to be space in the paint, not, not so tight, because then, then you have to get in there to look at it. And that's great for realism or hyper-realism, or if you're trying to paint like Vermeer, that's fantastic, but that's not loose brush. Loose brush work or expressionism is when you step back and then you let it all come together without um y your mind just puts it together you know without any any conceptual idea of it you don't have to you have to say oh yeah those are apples no you, you step back and you, and you know what they are you know what they are you don't you don't have to go and and, and make sense of it or, or or what is this thing what what is, what is it no if you if you pull you know you step back you know without using any concept you know that uh, some sort of leaves, some, some something in the background, maybe a tree branch or something. And that's what I love about this style. So there it is, my friends. Again, uh, my name is Jose Trujillo. I do teach classes now. If anyone is interested, let me know, and I'll send you a link to that. I teach classes on painting and also on marketing artwork for those of you who are taking it a step further with your art, getting it in the galleries and, and online shops and all that good stuff. So... There it is. Take care. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.